so just checking in here with this uh, kit then um it's it's a very nice kit to be honest it's a, it's a nice change this has been about four hours to get to this stage which is um from 148th aircraft uh is pretty good i mean um that's with adding a bit of detail in the cockpit as well and all the rest of it so it's not um you know i'm not rushing the build uh, these seams here very clever they go in they fit quite nicely as long as you can get it um when you're gluing it up so if you're using something like tamiya extra fin um you just sort of push the wing down to make sure all that comes flush there's very little clean up there um i'll check the seams with a primer coat once i've done all of the construction <coughs> however there's meant to be um panel lines there and across there so i mean i'm not going to worry too much if there is a major uh, if there's a, a small depression, I'll just sort of rescribe it. But if it obviously looks like a sunken seam, then um, I'll fill it and then rescribe it afterwards. Um, the other notice, notable one is here, <coughs> running along there. And there is a little bit of a gap, no matter how you go about it, you're going to have that small gap. So I've used super glue there to fill most of it. Um, and these white spots you can see is uh, perfect plastic putty that I've just... Uh, pushed in there and then sanded back almost entirely um, So again, I'll check that these small ribs here I'm gonna need to add because I've I've taken the best part of a third of them off there um, so I'm gonna cut those off So that they still leave a mark and then just put um, a couple strips of plastic card on there and uh, that should do exactly the same thing um, Just to note again, we've got a small piece of photo etch that goes in one of the wheel wells here, so to keep an eye on um, so uh, as far as I've seen with this kit I can't see much problem whatsoever I mean there's a few part, uh, detail areas that are lacking like these two holes are drilled out for instance and a few small bits like that but uh, you know the the impressions were there for the holes um, but I am having a bit of a problem with the cowling uh, the fit is fine and and there's no problem as far as that's concerned as you can see it actually goes on there quite nicely but there is this recognisable um, rib here, and that's trying to show the, um, not iconic, but it's a well-known feature of the Polycarpov. There's an, there's an aluminium uh, ring here. Um, I imagine it's a fastening ring or something like that. It runs all around the cowling and joins it from this part to the fuselage part of the cowling. And um, sometimes that's painted over especially if you want an easy life that would be a, a good way to do it but most of the ones in Spain and this is what I'm going to do here one of the Republican ones um, they were showing that and they, they did show so um, we're going to need to represent that but also um, Edward's done it as a bit of a lip here I don't know if you can hear that it's quite a substantial lip as well and what it, sh it should actually be flush or if not slightly sunken um, so that's the first thing so I'm going to get rid of that and as I say, it's meant to be flush. There's plenty of um, uh, reference pictures online for this aircraft, uh, so you can you know you can easily find any reference that you want to check these things out. Uh, there's a couple. There's one in Spain flying, which is um, in the Republican colours, and that's uh, you know I found some HD pictures where I've been able to zoom right into this area and see quite a lot. So that's that. Really, once I've got this sorted, I put the cowling. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything left to worry about. We've got the uh, the horizontal stabilizers and the rudder to go on. Then the carriage is a little bit fiddly, but uh, you know nothing to really worry about. And then we've got the resin guns and the pitot tube. I'm gonna check those. So I've got this set from Quick Boost here, which has um, hollowed out gun barrels. Now I'm hoping they're just a drop fit. So there we go, I'll get it back to the time lapse now and we'll probably see this right the way through until um, maybe nearly even the end of the build to be honest, I don't think there's any reason to check in. Um, I'll put a picture up now in the in the corner showing you the marking scheme I'm going to do. Um, this is a Polycarpov um, I-16 Type 10 uh, from Spain, Spanish Civil War, in the Republican service and um, it was flown by Derek Dickinson who was a Canadian volunteer commanding the um, the Republican Air Force Squadron which was uh, Red Wings, um, the Spanish I'm gonna murder but I'll have a go, it's uh, Alas Rojos, Rojos? <laughs> uh, so Red Wings based at Castellan de la Plana uh, which was outside Valencia in Spain in August 1938 um, and as you can see there um, 
you know, there's a good option there that you can see at the front here with the cowling where <laughs> based on this I could paint it green and I could uh, not have to worry about the old um, putting an aluminium strip there which is a bit of a pain. Um, so undersides of the wings are solid red to uh, the landing gear. So that's here. Um, which is, uh, and that's distinguished from the ordinary red bands on blue found on most Republican aircraft. So it should, be for, should make for a nice build and interesting marking schemes. One last thing to note are the resin exhausts that I've got here from Quick Boost. Now they do fit, he says, but uh, uh, they're a bit, what's the word, cack handed I suppose. I mean, I would have thought they would have just slotted in nice and flush. But you've got to kind of bend them in there for a start, like this. And then you can get them to poke out how you want them. So, like, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty much it. They kind of just stick out like that. That one's okay. That's okay. And that's okay. When you look in front, you know, it's hardly square. It's at a right old uh, wonky angle. And, um,. With a massive gap, but I think that's how we're going to have to play it. I think we're just going to have to get the exhaust looking right on the outside, not really worry about how things look on the inside, and then um, it'll all be covered when the engine and the cowling goes on anyway, and that should blank out any of the light. Hopefully, that's a, a not a too um, in-depth little update on where we are, and um, I think we'll probably see you at the end of the build now. So I'm um, just uh, cracking on with the landing gear here on the um, polycarp off. Uh, you've seen just um, in the in the bits that have just gone through where I've dropped the um, elevators. 
I need to get get to the bottom of this terminology, but I'm going to stick with that. So um, I've taken the elevators, uh, cut them off of the horizontal stabilizers here, and dropped them uh, because that's how it they seem to be in um, quite a lot of the pictures I've seen. So um, I've got the front landing gear on now as well, and this looks pretty good to be honest. In the pictures I've seen them, they are quite low to the ground when they're on the floor. So. Uh, when, they're, when they're in landing gear down. So that's the uh, painting done now on this polycarp off and um, there's no decals to go on with this because it's uh, just got the 23 markings on the rudder which I've painted on. Um, so there's nothing uh, really major to report here. The paints I've used are um, MRP Russian World War II colours basically. So we've got um, the A2G for the underside and the A2-3. Uh, for the top side green, I think that green's a little bit off. Um, and it is a bit funny, MRP are a bit, it, you know, they have a little bit of issues with some of their greens, I've noticed, but it was a little bit thin, um, so it took a lot of coats to build it up, and um, some of the, for instance, you know, underneath, this was no issue, like, to get that blue going, I mean, it was, you know, it was not really a problem, but the green took a lot of layers, and... Um, I'm not totally convinced with the colour, but it looks okay. Um, the red there is just XF7, so that's Tamiya, good old trusty Tamiya. Um, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting scheme. They were called the Red Wings. Um, there's not a lot of uh, information on them, to uh, to say the least. But uh, the information I have seen is um, everything points towards it being an unusual paint scheme, which this certainly is as far as... Uh, Republican polycarpoffs go. Everything else is painted up, so we've got the uh, pito tube there. Uh, which is painted red, and that's going to go in the wing, that's from the Quick Bruce set. Uh, I've used the Edward masks that were in the Profi Pack kit to paint up the wheels, and they're obviously uh, ready to go with nice sharp lines. Um, just painted the prop black, uh, I think that's pretty straightforward, and then the rest of it's green, so we've got the um, windscreen that's going to go on like that and give it the sort of uniqueness. Um, I have painted up the gun sight, just painted that black, um, and I didn't like the uh, bit of plastic that was on there, it had a seam line and stuff for the clear bit, so I'll just use a bit of acetate on that to make that look a bit uh, bit more sensible. And then we've got the door there to attach as well, so I painted the rear side of that the exterior colour. So uh, next up, I don't think there's much merit in filming me putting this together, it's it's not going to be that exciting. So I think we are um, jump straight into this once I've uh, got the matte coat on. I'm going to use um, the super matte from MRP, which I, I always like. Uh, you do need to watch it when you're going straight onto like acrylic and stuff, it can be a little bit strong, but um, if you don't go on flooding it on, you're, you're all right. Yeah, next step, uh, we'll be into weathering on this one, and then I've got a little base to go on. And uh, something I mean, need to show you is uh, the figure I'm gonna add to this. So uh, I'm not quite certain how I'm gonna paint this on camera. Um, probably might do it in stages, just show you how, how we're going there. But um, what I've got here is a uh, Czechoslovakian pilot uh, from CMK. And uh, he's dated 1938. Now, obviously, this isn't a Czech aircraft. However, he's pretty much wearing what a Russian-Soviet sort of um, uh, pilot would be wearing at the time. So it's, it's, a, it's a jumpsuit, which, uh, a flight suit, which looks the part, that's for sure. And he is carrying a um, parachute. And, uh, and that's the sort of thing we're going to look like there. And... Um, I think that should look pretty good on a small little base, having him walking towards the aircraft. Um, so yeah, that should be good fun. Okay, so we're pushing on with this now, and um, the end is in sight with this one. So as you can see here, I started on a little base, um, and what I've used there is just some of this AK uh, natural rough terrain. Uh, it, I suppose it has come out a little bit rough, thinking on it. Um, 
there, it, it, I was hoping for it to be a bit smoother, but uh, there you go, you live and learn. Um, that's not a problem. What I'm going to do here, all I've done is sort of sprayed it um, like a mix of flat earth and a few other beigey colours and then um, chucked in a couple browns as well just to give a, a dark uh, tone really. It's just a starting tone. It's not going to look like this. Um, and then uh, the aircraft is obviously going to sit on it uh, like this. So it's a nice shape. A nice size for it even. Um, I've got a border uh, that goes a uh, frame for it, which I've taken off so it doesn't get paint on it. Um, so, uh, the intention with this is to sort of work out where the aircraft's going to go and then have sort of rough area and then just kind of have a, a cleared area as well. So, I, it's quite soft stuff. It's like, um, it's almost like hard PVA. It's it's quite spongy. You, you can pick these bits off and they're sort of tear off like it would if you're pulling off of um, PVA, but... Uh, it um, it's it's set a bit harder than that, so I don't know what stuff it is, but it's it's something like that. It's acrylic based, it said. So I should be able to sand off areas and um, level it off a little bit and get the roughness away. So uh, that's what I do. And yeah, so I sprayed this one with um, Tamiya Khaki Brown, which is I think XF forty nine. Um, and that's the whole lot, including the face. So that gives a good sort of starting point there. Um, I, I'm not going to do sort of a figure painting demonstration, uh, nor am I capable of doing that, or um, is this does this build sort of warrant it, but I will uh, probably just show you in stages. So like I said, a base coat here, next, pick out the face, and then I would go in with oils, and then when I'm happy with that, probably seal that in with a matte coat, and then come in with dry brushing. Uh, not well, not really dry brushing, highlighting I suppose. I don't like dry brushing, it sort of makes it look a bit dusty. Um, and that is where we are. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'll just do a little bit on camera. We'll speed it up and stop the waffling. And um, show you all the little bits as I do it. So um, again, I probably won't dwell on the figure. I'll just show you in the sped up video. And then we'll um, get to the final reveal.
So here we are, um, complete. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the build up to this point and um, I've got some reveal pictures for you after uh, this little outro. Uh, it's a lot easier to show the finished build as uh, pictures obviously so um, I won't spend too much time showing you everything on video. Um, I've had a few funny things happen. I've got no idea why this shape has appeared. Um, I must get, have some oil or residue or something there. That's meant to be pigments on there and it, it, no matter how much I brush it over it just leaves this shape so we don't want to adhere there but um, I'll try and fix that at, at a uh, later date. So um, I also got the figure painted up and um, inevitably I did not film any of it and I didn't give you any updates because I just got carried away but it was simple stuff just used a different sort of khaki um, khaki colours let's see if I can zoom in on to give you an idea of what I'm talking about there he is so I just used um, varying different sort of khaki colours and some light uh, uh, like a bone colour from Citadel there to uh, do the straps and stuff and leather for the helmet and uh, gloves and simple as that and I think it's quite effective it's exactly what I was after when I'm sort of pondering, looking at the plane like he is, uh, thinking about jumping in it and going off on the next mission. And it gives um, gives the aircraft scale. It does actually show you just how small the aircraft is. And um, yeah, I think it all works. It's a simple little base. It's a little vignette. You know, it's not really a, a diorama. It's just more sort of scene. Um, and I really quite like it. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that build and let me know down below in the comments uh, your thoughts and if, if you know anything you like about it or if you've got any um, interesting info or all the rest of it. Um, give the video a like if you like what you see and um, obviously subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy the reveal videos that are coming up and I'll see you in the next video.